According to the INVEST guidelines, high quality user stories are small or sized appropriately. In our product backlog here, we have some nicely sized user stories. Our story points are 1, 2, 4, 8, and 16. So we have some nicely sized user stories. These are small. 3 is a little bit larger, medium size, 2, 3. But then we have this one that's 8. That's very large. That's the user registration user story. Since it's so large relative to the other user stories, let's take a look at it and see what's going on. Now we can see here the user story template's pretty simple. As an online user, I want to be able to register a username and password so I can have my own personal portal on the website. Well, right off the bat, that's a very large customer initiative, having your own personal portal. But let's see what happens down here in the acceptance criteria. This got out of hand. It looks like someone was just brainstorming here. They have a whole section for the CRM initiative. We want to capture all the user activities and when logged in for the CRM initiative. That's hard to understand. You have a security here, the whole logging on and the user ID and password, and then the user portal experience, what the user wants to be able to see and do while they're logged in. This is a lot and it's very fuzzy. We also have some attached documentation, which is another flag that this might be way too big. We have the strong user ID specification doc. Well, that might be something that the company has on saying how to do a strong user ID. But you can see here the first initiative is use strong user ID criteria unless customer survey shows this is negative to the customer. So that isn't even really relative unless we know we want to use it. And we don't know that until the survey's over. And also there's the CRM vision doc. Well, that's way too high level for the team to really understand what's required there. That's just a vision. So you can tell the team had a really hard time estimating this because they ended up with eight story points. If an estimate for a user story is large, there normally isn't enough detail or too many unknowns to provide a good estimate. In this case, there's just too much user story. These types of user stories are considered epics and they should be split into several user stories that are small enough to understand and estimate. The team will provide more accurate estimates for smaller user stories. Now if we go back to the backlog, I'd like to point out that splitting user stories is a deferred activity. Stories at the bottom of our backlog here are going to be very large and fuzzy with very little detail. We have some epics, we have some large user stories, and that's fine because these are low priority. We're not going to be working them anytime soon and we really don't want to waste time defining them because as they move up in the backlog as time progresses, the whole project could change, the customer focus could change, and these could change. So it's okay for them to be fuzzy and large down here. As items at the top of the product backlog are work, the high priority items, these will move up and they need to be split into large user stories. They're not small enough to really do an estimate for yet, but they're much easier to understand and discuss to see how to split them up even further. Once they get to the top of the product backlog up here, this is where they have to be sized appropriately because these are about ready to get worked, to be pulled into a sprint to be worked. They need to be discussed, details added, acceptance criteria has to be good, and they need to have a good estimate assigned to them. Now, if we look at a good user story, here's US1. This is save plant result list displayed on the website. This is only two user points. As an online user, I want to be able to save or print the results of my search so I can use them to shop for plants. That's very focused. Um, the customer can save the list of plants returned. We can create a PDF file so they can print it or they can save it to their local system. Unit tests are complete user documentation complete, fully tested. Now this is good acceptance criteria. It's very focused, it's very easy to understand, it's easy to test. This user story, the team will be able to estimate it and complete it very quickly. Additionally, the task for the story will be complete early in the sprint, allowing QA to test it during the sprint while the larger user stories are being worked. And so QA can be utilized throughout the sprint rather than having the backlog like you do a lot of times in other processes where everything gets thrown over to the QA team at the end and they really don't have time to test it all fully. 
So remember, the S in the INVEST guideline stands for small or sized appropriately. The quality of a user story is definitely enhanced by keeping it small.